Ramble. Thank you to DoorDash and BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode. I like the vanilla. I like them all. I like the one that's like chocolate. Chocolate. What's your whole corner? My name's Miles. I like chocolate. I like Did chocolate. Did you get that on recording? Are my name my name's Miles. I like chocolate. That's good. Ray, do you want to do your Miles impression? Um, Drag him to hell. Go for it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Come on. My I'd be like, <laughs> my name's Miles. I made a baby. <laughs> I give advice. <laughs> And I like chocolate. But no, definitely, man. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Rainy, your turn. Yeah. You're like, so do you want to do the edit today and then we'll get it all wrapped up by tomorrow? Oh, <laughs> my name is Miles. Do you, do you maybe want to? Sorry, was that? A, like, that didn't feel like a drag, but like I feel like a normal thing I would say maybe, but like not in my voice. <laughs> Yeah, why didn't you do the Miles voice? Yeah, I do the Miles voice. Come on. The Miles voice. Okay. Well, the the sort of performative Miles voice or no, the, the real one? one? The real one. The grounded. Like this. Um, yeah, I don't really get why they said that. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Let me do my impression of... First of all, I'll do Rainy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be so good. That's going to be perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. Zach, actually, though, I think this is a really good segment. Yeah. For real, though. For reality. I, I feel like when I'm doing it, I'm making her sound more Valley Girl, which is not intended. There's well, just an inc- I've gotten airy a lot in my life. I was I got the astronaut award in ninth grade. <laughs> what is the astronaut award? I think, well, it was a paper plate award, but I think they were just calling me Spacey. You're not spacey. Thank you. No, you wow, just that was healing. Thank you. <laughs> no, I don't think you're spacey. No, you're you're deeply thoughtful, but you have a yeah, I agree a hilarious buoyancy to your language. It's compliment time. <laughs> you look good. Let me do my Zach impression. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the thing about like the the movie is like it's not necessarily my favorite, but like you have to see this Twitter thread where <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk faster. Yeah, that's sort of my thing. Yeah, yeah. it's sort of like, the, so the way he shot it, right? The way like, he did it was like, oh angles. my God, like, it was crazy, man. <laughs> so <laughs> Really good, really good. All right, here's, let me just go back to my Miles impression. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is good. I'm a stupid little baby boy, and I that's take a, a bathtub with a poopy pants. Yeah, you, I, I don't know if you think I'm, I'm a baby. Like, I guess you think I'm a baby that poops. And I guess I want to be I clear. I in the bathtub. I mean, I don't poop my pants, so I don't know what's... <laughs> Have you never pooped your pants? Um, be honest. When's the last time you pooped your pants? Full poop? <laughs> Man. I don't know that I can think of a or time peed. I shit... I peed my pants in eighth grade one time. <laughs> I don't think I've shit my pants unless I was, like, sick. Oh, because uh-huh. he went and... Shit his pants when Giddler came around just to put him down. Let's get started, guys. Well, thanks so much for listening to the tripod. Thanks. We know that this is your number one place to get the pop culture gossip <laughs> and your, your no- and your weekly pick me up. Your number one destination <laughs> for the remelays. And we know what you're thinking. You signed on to listening to this podcast five years ago. <laughs> And there were uh, some other guys, and they're not here anymore. Now it's just Zach and his weird buddies. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, we had four people in the thumbnail at one point. Yep. Three mm-hmm. of them are gone. Bam, 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 one bam, of them bam. will be back, but he decided to follow his dreams and put on a <laughs> show. Yeah. My yeah. name's Keith, and I'm a Broadway star. Now, in the time that everyone's, you know, sort of, for lack of a better term, you are at the head of the ship. Yeah, which you're is you're leading the charge. How do you feel? How do you feel right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zach just realized that was true. <laughs> I uh, you know, I basically missed 2 months of work and I came back to a a, a just fires everywhere. Really? really? Oh my god. Is everything bad? Everything's bad. That's cool. We're barely hanging on by oh, a thread awesome. over here. Oh, that's that. it's, cute. It's yeah. chaos. No, that's the calm before. I mean, that's the storm before the dawn. It's giving. It's always st- darkest before the dawn. Mm-hmm. 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 I've had so many serious meetings. Really? It's, oh, really? Oh my god! So many big, like, like, no way. like, like brain 
fucking gears turning in your head meetings oh yeah. of just like, hey, what's what do we look like for the next four years? No, like that's a good those question. Kind yeah. of thing. What no, do we look like? No, this is my escape. No, no, no. This is my I'm escape. curious. Uh, is there going to be an announcement for The Office, do you think? Uh, <laughs> this is what's going on. <laughs> the company's being sold to Amazon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're selling. No, I mean, I definitely, I have a long-term vision. Yeah. But to get there... We gotta <laughs> give Zach a. I was gonna say to get there, we have to give Jack a mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> to get there, we're gonna have to, to start to, rapping. Yeah, we have to change some hairstyles. <laughs> to get to the ensemble cast, I need Jonathan needs to start wearing a vest, and Jack needs to bleach his tips. No, I mean the re- the real <laughs> the real thing. I think is um, Miles's hair. Yeah. Dude, it's getting caught. I'm fucking done with it. Are you? Really? Yeah, I, I, no, I, Miles. Come on. Rainy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. Just braid it. I, oh. <laughs> I, um, it was fun for while it lasted. I have long hair. But I just think it's like, you know what? I don't like that it kind of reveals itself from behind. Yeah. That it's sort of like I have no, little pigtails. No, people would pay so much money for that. Ponytail curl, it. That level of I, curl. I know, but here's the thing. Yeah. I just, I feel like, you know what it is? I feel less mobile. Maybe uh-huh. swallow your food first. No. <laughs> But <laughs> I feel less mobile. Yeah. What to me? Do you use? I'm actually curious. Dove. No fucking way. Is bar- that serious? He uses yeah, bar soap. I know, is that a joke? It kind of sounded like a joke. No, it was dove. Although I used an Oya hair mask. Oh, I love primping and priming. Yeah, so I used that recently, but I usually use a Dove coconut hydration one. Wow. Which I've been told that Dove like Doesn't erodes clean. your body in yeah. a way, but I don't know why. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but you know what I'll say is, um, yeah, the hair has got to go because I think that I, I miss being like, um, you know what it is? To me also, we were talking about this a little bit ago, the hair ages me up and it makes me feel like I have a, a new a new brand. And I want to. I want some of the old. I'm, I'm like, let me get the old hair back. Oh. Buzz it. I don't want to buzz it. Buzz you, it. But I do. I am like, I want to get this sort of hair where I'm like, oh yeah, this is how I. Because I, to me, it's like I've added things to my life, but I don't have a desire to change how I'm perceived necessarily. Yeah. Do you? So have you? I feel like since I've known you, you've had a beard. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort not, of wondering about shaving the beard. No, I'm gonna trim the beard because the beard's gotten a little longer. But I, when yeah. I when I don't have a beard, I really look strange. Maybe I would yeah. do it to give myself a mustache. I think that'd be funny for a little that'd bit. That'd be really that'd Actually, be a good bit. now that I think about it, maybe that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, do it. But do the whole handlebar, like all the way down like Mark Morales. <laughs> what, if, what if I just did a goatee? No, no, no. <laughs> because <laughs> I'd look really weird. Yes, sir. But, but um but yeah, I think that I wanna I wanna get a unified front. Um because mm-hmm. as Zach said the company you know we're, we're sort of looking to have a unified brand yep. of um, yep. new sort of marvel members this yep. is this is um uh-huh. what's it called uh-huh honey this is what it's called <laughs> where when marvel was like okay after endgame we did a new what's it called version two generation two phase three phase three and everyone yeah. loves this phase of marvel so we're, we're, sure, gonna, we're about to do that we're gonna do that one <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you want do you want real talk of like what what I'm actually planning? Yes, yeah, I give me real talk. Yeah. I have okay. a really dumb segment, but let's do this first. Great, we'll do. <laughs> so what I've been thinking about a lot is uh, uh, shows and mm-hmm. trying to move us towards shows because those are the things that we enjoy more. Yeah. Um. So they're you know like just a seasonality approach. So we obviously have without a recipe. Um. Phoning it in is a show that I spearheaded coming up with, and you know not alone like. We, Rachel and Devlin, our editor, mm-hmm. were really instrumental. Keith gave a lot of input. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just launched a new season of that. Uh, came with another show that I developed where that will be coming out soon. And so just thinking about things that are syndicatable, yeah. not yeah. like in the classic sense of like, uh, we're going to sell it to TBS, but right. I want formats that we could comfortably make theoretically a hundred of them. And oh, we see. love it. The audience loves it. Like I want strong formats mm-hmm. as opposed to having to do like Amazon beauty hack number seven. Like I want mm-hmm. things that feel like fun shows that yeah. we can come up with a lot of versions of yeah. that <clears throat> feel a little higher tier. And then in between those, we're free to make our weird art projects. Yeah. So yeah. how do we have regularity of a, a, a roster of formats mm-hmm. that feel buzzier? Yeah. Um, we went forward with that plan and 
uh, that plus the combination of me being out, we we now looked at our schedule and went, oh God, we don't have enough yeah. to release to a week when yeah. we said we were going to come back. We we did like um an Indian snacks taste test. It did really well. People were like, can we send you snacks from our country? Yeah. And people like it. Like those con- that content does well, but I'm just like, I have a question I, for you. I'm, yeah. Okay. To interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> What if you did something like that, but instead of shooting it with the classic BuzzFeed 2 camera setup, we gave limitations to it. We shoot it with one camera, documentary style, follow, and it's us like standing in a fucking Arby's yeah. eating Indian snacks. Miles, yeah. you're exactly right, and that's exactly what we're doing. That's great. Oh. So I was like, if I'm going, I just, I can't be, I think I'm like, what, eight years into this, like doing the same fucking 100%. thing again and again and again. Yeah. So if I'm going to be eating snacks because... We need something that is like easy, easy to produce in between some of our our bigger content. Like, I don't need to make it more complicated, but let's just make it different. So we're going to, you know, if we're going to try Mexican snacks, mm-hmm. which we're doing this week, I'm going to go to a Mexican supermarket and see if they'll let us film. And if they if they don't, then we'll take the snacks outside and we'll eat in the parking lot That's and great. like just mix it up a little bit, yeah, um, just to keep myself sane. <clears throat> yeah. So that's where we're at right now. So really right now, uh, while Keith is in New York for the next month and a half, because I missed two months of work, uh, I'm going to be making as many quick hit videos as Mm -hmm. possible so that we can then get back to making Mm. some of the higher tier stuff. And what it's going to end up looking like is that I'm not part of any of the the higher tier stuff, but just know I was a producer behind the scenes and now I have to be talent for all of the easier stuff. Yeah, I like that. Well, me and Rainy had a format called the Spice Girls, where we were going to kind of eat spicy foods. Oh, yeah. I like this. Yeah. Spice stuff overperforms. So I uh, did a... <laughs> we'll shoot it all on a drone. Sorry. I like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> a and drone? The spicier yeah. it gets, the further away the camera gets. No, yeah. I, but also we sort of have a teaspoon of each spice. Oregano. <laughs> That's what I thought you were talking about. <laughs> I think that'd be kind Start of funny. Start with oregano and we work our way up to cu- cumin. <laughs> I made a document, it's 10 pages, and I went through to formalize every f- show we have, mm-hmm. every show we're piloting, and then every format we have. Yeah. And I wanted to see if there were formats that we didn't even realize were formats. Uh-huh. So of like, oh, every time, I mean, this is a simple one, like every time we do spicy foods, those do really well. Yeah. Is there a format within that? It's like, it's kind of like pain tolerance. It's, yeah. you know, you could assume that like the reason a spice video does well is sort of the same reason, like a labor pain. Yeah. Not really, but people yeah. like watching people suffer. Yeah. Sure. So I looked for all of the kind of hidden patterns. Yeah. And the two that surprised me is that <laughs> our stoner content has out-indexed Oh, um, it's, yeah. Uh, oh. I mean, drunk content also, and we always knew that, but I don't think drunk stuff is sustainable. I also think it's like not good for the world. <laughs> and, like, drunk stuff? Well, just like for us to be like drunk doing, like glorifying being drunk, but I'm down yeah. to glorify being stoned all the time. Sure. Hey, <laughs> let's go for it. Um, so that stuff has done really well and made me think like, okay, what else can we do stoned? Is it going for stoner activities like the the weed dinner we did or is it i don't know if you have seen my favorite video of all time it's like a decade old but is a vice video where a guy does acid for the first time and then goes to the westminster dog show oh my god that's so funny funny. to to interview people and he's like has like a and i was like okay there's something so adorable about it yeah like where can me and quasi get high and just be and it's just funny that we're there (laughs) at the state fair yeah, right? Yeah. By the way, I saw that reminds me of a very funny video I saw. Not even really funny, wholesome and more. Is this guy who goes like, "Hey, you guys uh truth like he's like truth or dare." To these like kids in this mall, and they're like, "Uh, dare." And he goes, "Okay, call your dad and tell him you're grateful for him." <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> and the kids like, "All right, all right, bet." Like he calls and he just goes, "Hey dad, just want to let you know like you just do a lot for me." It's like such a fucking Aww. great. I was like that's such a good subversion of the form to make this like wholesome thing. And I was like, what if you did stuff like that? Yeah. Where it's, it's like daring people to just do stuff that's like really like lovely. That is lovely. Have yeah. you seen Strangers Call Their Crush? No. It's this woman who goes around and is like, who's your crush? Like call him right now. And it is like, it makes Whoa. my stomach so nervous. <laughs> and that's a lot cool. of times, sometimes they say yes, but a lot of times they were like, I don't feel the same. Yeah, it's tough. It's really, it's brutal.
This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. I recently learned that, believe it or not, I'm actually fairly cool under pressure. I I had a a, a medical mishap before a major life event, let's put it like that. And instead of crumbling under stress and anxiety, I actually learned that I had developed really good skills to cope uh, and manage my stress. And I really have therapy to thank for that. I use BetterHelp. I find it such a great and easy way to have therapy work into my hectic schedule. You get to do video calls from anywhere you are. Um, It's really easy to find a therapist, to match with different therapists if you're not gelling with the person that you have. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you're going to be matched with a therapist. If for some reason that therapist is not the person for you, they make it super easy to change and find someone who's perfect for you. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash tripod today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash tripod. Tell me if you've been here before. You're ready to make your dinner. You got all the ingredients, all the accoutrement. It's date night, maybe. You're gonna really wow, razzle-dazzle in the kitchen. And then you realize that there is one single ingredient that you do not have, or maybe you ran out of a usual pantry staple, or maybe you need a last minute item before your guests arrive. Look, you trusted DoorDash to deliver restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You're gonna get exactly what you ordered, or they're gonna make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you pick them yourself. You'll get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code TRIPOD23. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no min subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code TRIPOD23. Don't forget, that's code TRIPOD23 for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. And then a theory that I, I mean, there's other stuff that maybe I'll, I'll hold close to the chest, some other uh, yeah. uh, revelations I've had that we'll be putting into our content. But Ooh. then just a, a hunch that I have, yeah. and maybe this is just more of my personal itchings yeah. as a creative, is to get weird. Yes. And I think that we yeah, live in an era where people sort of crave, not necessarily absurdity, but things that just are silly and inane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that the success of a movie like Cocaine Bear actually speaks to that. And yeah. I'm dead serious of like... Cocaine th- Bear changed your life. There it is. But people just like want something that's like, oh, this is fun and escapist and it's just stupid and silly mm-hmm. and the world is crazy and it's time to cra- catch the grease boy. That's what I'm fucking <laughs> talking about, man. If you green light it, I promise it'll, it'll do numbers. It'll at least get 100K views. It'll at least get 100 views. <laughs> Zach, I can see it right now. It's Some of a- the newer viewers who may not know Catch the Grease Boy. Okay, so first of all, it would be a like almost rehearsal style documentary about the making of the thing while it's doing oh, the thing. Oh, that's funny. Because it's such a crazy concept. The concept is when I worked at BuzzFeed, I did a greasy video where I fried a bunch of food and stuff, and Keith was in it. It's the first thing I made for BuzzFeed. And I had two gallons of grease under my desk mm-hmm. for the whole time I worked there. And I was like, how the fuck do I use it? Like, I don't want to throw them away. Uh-huh. So I had this game, <laughs> and I was like, what if I make this video? And I pitched it at BuzzFeed over and over to no avail. I was not powerful enough. I was not Zach. I could yeah, do yeah. what I wanted there. I was kind of a renegade. Yeah, Zach could do whatever <laughs> the fuck he wanted. So I came up with this video concept, and I pitched it to Zach probably 10 times. Yep. The concept is, can you catch the grease boy? Similar to Can You Catch the Greased Pig, a Southern tradition loved by all. The premise is we put out an ad on Craigslist or just on billboards. Can no, you catch insties, the greased boy? On Insties. $10,000 to catch the grease boy. This is a boy in this picture of me. I'm going to be covered in <laughs> grease on rollerblades, rollerblading down the Venice board. Rollerblades. And the whole thing is if you catch the grease boy and you pin him for 10 <laughs> seconds, you get $10,000. The catch is I'm s- there are going to be duplicates. It's kind of like when you release four pigs into a thing and you name them one, one through five. Yeah. There's going to be duplicates of the grease boy that are not me. 
that are going to be covered in grease running around other parts of this. Miles, I can hear you salivating. I'm in the so, microphone. I know. <laughs> I'm getting salivating because I'm, I'm just thinking about like, okay, so it's obviously like a follow, it's a follow doc. It's I think thing. you're going to get so injured. Yeah, the way we cap we d- we deal with that is that maybe I'm greased up, but I have like armor on, like football <laughs> armor. So I'm not new. A helmet Zach. at least. Per- Jesus, keep yeah. your pants on. <laughs> but like I'm greased up. And, and are I'm, the duplicates like Jonathan and Jack? Yeah, yeah. Or actors we cast that are hunkier versions of me. Oh. <laughs> and so the idea is if you can catch the grease boy, then like it's a cash prize. It's Mr. Beast style. Ten thousand ten thousand dollars to who catches the grease boy? Catch the Grease Boy, win ten thousand dollars. Yeah, it would be the mystery. You're gonna style. get the shit kicked out of you. Yeah, I think that maybe over I the can't. Co- I think we need to hire another Grease Boy because I can't afford to lose you. Aww. Yeah, maybe I'm just the host. Okay, and I can host the event, and we get like a bodybuilder who's the Grease Boy. Ooh, we make sure he's stable. So All right, so we'll think about that. Yeah. Um, I, and by the way, me and Miles will produce the whole thing if you green light. If you green light it, yeah, well, I mean, you don't even have to worry about it. You don't even have to worry about it. It'll just consider it done. It's actually an audio project. <laughs> it's There's no exactly, video. It's just <laughs> me running. <laughs> and there goes the grease boy. He's off. <laughs> <laughs> so we pitched on this on this show a video called We're Horses Now. Oh, yeah. yeah. That I'm fully on board for. Great it's just video. me and Keith becoming horses. Sure. Um, but I was also thinking about what if we just take formats and smash them together so like take an identity with a format that doesn't belong yeah. and i came up with this by an accident i you know you, sometimes you type a video as a joke and then you go oh no this is happening this yeah. is it. and so i'm gonna make a video called i ate soup on every ride at universal studios that's so funny <laughs> that's super funny yeah also immediately like, and by the way you know what we can't you know what we can't release this because i don't want anyone to steal it hot soup yeah, piping <laughs> hot isn't that or so Jenny good Despacho. But I am also filming the video where I'm going to take drugs and go to Super Mario World, so. I kind of also want to do a video where, like, what if we, yeah, we, we like, blindfold you, put you in the back of a trunk, drive you into the middle of the desert, and just let you go with a GoPro. That's so funny. We abandoned our boss in yeah. the desert. And then it's you trying to figure out, what do no, I do? I actually think that's, like, I no love phone. vlog style. No yeah. fucking phone. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And easy. It's a day. Maybe One not even day. in the desert. Like, a small town in upstate California. Maybe you get Jonathan to be filming you. Like, what do you do? If you had no phone, do you hitchhike? <laughs> no Uber. No Ubs. We just did a, a, a Guilty Pleasures episode on Rat Race, which is a two, early 2000s movie where a bunch of people are, there's basically, they're like, hey, here's a key. First person in New Mexico gets $2 million. Ready? Go. Yeah. And it's so exhilarating. Just this idea of like, love it. you don't know that you're about to enter a race and now you're in a race and go across the country. And yeah. I, I love that. No, that's so cool. Well, speaking of amazing ideas, Zach. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's get stupider. Artificial intelligence has been in the news. Oh, yeah. People are always wondering what's intelligent? How can I artificially be intelligent? Mm-hmm. Am I People smarter? are mad about artificial intelligence. They're mad about it because it's stealing art. Of, it's stealing art. It's crazy. It's sort of unethical. But I thought, hey, I've been podcast producing for a little bit now. Yeah. Maybe I'm gooder than a robot. Hard to say, probably. So what I did was I had a robot generate podcast segments. Love this. And we're going to we're going to be testing them out to see if they're freaking <laughs> smart or if they're lacking the certain je ne sais quoi <laughs> that me and Rainy bring to the group. Now, did yeah. you use ChatGPT or Bing? I used a, so there's a site called Notion and you can use an AI functionality. I would imagine that it's powered by ChatGPT. Okay. Um, but what it does is it helps you. You can write in what do you want it to do and it'll write out a whole thing. It's really crazy how quickly it's evolving yeah and what's also crazy i mean people are upset about it for i would say valid reasons right we're feeding ai information from the internet and so for ai art it is taking artists work and blending it together and now some people would say like okay well like every artist is inspired by other artists and yeah. steals. But this is a little yeah. more direct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, same with writing, right? It's not actually... What I think is more dangerous about the text AI is not that it's stealing from writers, is that we as people apply a a level of... Um, what is What is the word I'm looking for? Humanity. No, well, that too, but no... We apply a level of of uh, expertise and there validity we where we assume that the AI is like above us and that it's 
gestating and generating all of the information on the internet, gestating it, and then like this is an objective truth. Right. And it's not. It's just like summarizing bullshit that it reads. Yeah. But we, our minds are so susceptible to like looking for experts. Yeah. I don't know. Right. The, the whole ramification of all of this is like quite weird to me. Yeah. And also, like, we can be mad about it, but once a new, like, this is now the yeah. baseline. Yeah. We yeah. can't go back. Right. It's here now. So what do we do? And I don't know. But anyway, let's have fun with it. <laughs> no, totally. Um, and uh, that's kind of my point is I feel like I bring a certain, you know, spooky or kooky being a classic. <laughs> I sort of AI could never. Yeah, AI yeah. could never come up with something like spooky or kooky. I would like to see it try. I'd like to fucking see it try. I'd like to fucking. <laughs> you come in for my job, AI. So did you feed it our episodes or how did you? What did no, you- I just said give me silly podcast segments. <laughs> Literally, that's what I wrote in. Generate silly podcast segments for me to use on the show. Wow, and very very broad. Yeah, here we go. Are you looking for some inspiration for your next podcast episode? Here are some funny podcast segment ideas to get your creative juices flowing. You read it a little more robot-y. Are you looking for some yeah, inspiration? A little, little less robot For your next podcast episode. <laughs> like this. Here's some funny podcast segment ideas. You know, I'll do in that TikTok voice. Here are some funny podcast <laughs> I- segment ideas to get your creative juices flowing. Uh, bad joke of the day. Start your episode with a corny joke and have your co-host or, or guests rate how bad it was on a scale of one to ten. I mean, that's not bad. Yeah. I've never told a bad joke. What did the cup say to the plate? No, sorry. What did the plate say to the cup? I you're, this you're no, you got to guess. Okay. What did the plate say to the cup? Um, you, what you have a you have a hole in you. Wait, no. The cup say to the plate. What did the cup say to the plate? Why the flat face? That's pretty good, Miles. You got one. Uh, no. Okay. Um, this meal's on me. No, it's what did the plate say to the cup? What did the plate say to the cup? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You changed it again. Okay. Bad segment alert. (laughs) Flop. Big flop. Okay. (laughs) I mean, did you rate it? It says zero. I feel like. I'd say zero. (laughs) Oh, not not your joke. I'm saying the segment was bad. Oh, yeah. The robot is lost. I'm smarter than a robot. I don't know. Start with a bad joke and rate it from one to 10. Okay, here's how I'm going to let me pitch on it. Yeah. Because this is me using my expertise here. Right. Start with something fucking horny you did. <laughs> you say start with something horny? Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> I, okay, yeah, well, let's try this again. You can it on a scale of one to six. Okay, all right, I got this, I got this, okay? Yeah. What did the plate say to the cup? Yeah. Or No, sorry, what did the cup say to the plate? No, yeah. no, wait, no, it was what did the plate say to the cup? What's that? <laughs> you want to fucking... <laughs> Go, you little plate cup. I'd say that was a punch up. Yeah. You're such a cup. I'm going to put my food inside of you. Zach, that's inappropriate. (laughs) Number two, would you rather pose a series of ridiculous hypothetical questions to your co host or guest and have them choose between two absurd options? Wait. Wait. Would you ask me would I rather and then give me one option? What? No, I was the reading segment. About what well, the segment you need is. punctuation, Miles. Would you rather? Thank you. Question mark. Period. You read that as one full <laughs> Descript- sentence. Descript- Both of us were confused. Description. Description. Yeah, thank you. Period. Pose a series of ridiculous hypothetical questions to your co-host or guest and have them choose between two absurd options. Well, this is we would never have oh, a segment oh, like that. So we have to so as the producers, we have to come up with the he cut with the questions. So oh, okay. this robot's putting work on yeah, you. Like, yeah, well, it does feel like I'm doing a lot of the legwork. <laughs> well, what if you ask the robot to come up with a series of would you rather's? Ooh, that's a good question. You know what? Honestly, let me do it. I have that I have it on my phone. Say come up with some silly would you rather's for two really cool people. And here, let's see. AI is writing. Do you think it understands what a would you rather is? Probably. I mean, maybe if it doesn't, it's dumb. Yes. Or what funny is? Because funny is actually. It's pretty hard. A it does thing. seem like they're a little. It's like a little conservative, to be honest. Oh wow! Like I had, one, I did one time, and it was like all the fake news that's floating around. Are you using like Elon Musk's AI? I'm using Truth Social. <laughs> AI. It's writing. It's it's just writing. Slow this is robot, the the Ben me. Shapiro bot. <laughs> yeah, this is Ben Shapiro bot. Okay, so would you rather? <laughs> it's actually a bad question. Was that my? Was that a good Ben Shapiro impression? <laughs> terrible Ben Shapiro. 
Oh my God, this thing is literally so slow. Yeah. See, this is like, I can generate it faster. <laughs> well, you're using- Would you rather have Skittles for the rest of your life or only be able to <laughs> wait on a robot with your fucking butt? <laughs> <laughs> so- Okay, wait, tell me about this. Yeah. I kiss with my <laughs> butt. Would you rather- So Skittles are the only form of nutrition or are you like- <laughs> Would you rather have Skittles for the rest of your life uh-huh. only <laughs> or- only be able to kiss with your fucking butt. So explain to me how one kisses with their butt. Okay. Does, does so it your feel- butt? In order to show affection to other people, you have to be able to kiss with your butt. So I'm a, I'm my butt to your mouth. Yeah. Well, not yours. Yeah. Unless I need to give you affection you can't for some skittles. reason. And you can't have any skittles. Oh, that's tough. And now in this world, <laughs> is this also? So basically, it's like if I want to kiss, someone has to eat you my say, ass. Pucker up. And they use their mouth, and you use your butt. Does my butt go? <laughs> and there's no, and you're not allowed to like. If you're at the candy store, you're not allowed to have any Skittles. Question: mm-hmm. Can my butt slip tongue? Is you there a don't tongue? have a tongue in your butt? <laughs> and like, if there's like a Halloween bucket or something like that, and there's a couple different options, you're not allowed to have the Skittles. <laughs> Okay, so for me, actually, this is very easy. <laughs> I'm choosing kiss with your butt. But again, so again, you can kiss with your butt. <laughs> but if you have, if like someone is handing like out candy at a yeah. party and there's a dish and you're not quite sure, you can't take a risk. <laughs> so when I like say goodbye to my grandma, yeah. I'm like, kiss her with her butt. And then yeah. when she has her little candy jar in the fucking cupboard. Right, no, that's, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. because here's the thing. I don't know if you guys have thought of this. If you only eat Skittles for rest of your life, you'll die. <laughs> so it's easy. Is Skittles going to do <laughs> like a, a protein ex- expansion I, pack? Yeah, that's interesting. I To me, it's you're only able to have Skittles, so therefore they have to sustain your life. Oh, then I'm back on board. Oh, Skittles. I want cavities, Skittles. Cavities, though. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you have to brush your teeth a lot more. You seem to not be accepting our answers. <laughs> Would you choose the Skittles? Look, Zach, I'm not an AI. I'm not going to be binary here. <laughs> the robot. There's a gray area, and that's what makes me better a podcast producer because I'm a person. Is the AI going to be giving me this much pushback? Because maybe No, I... but that's the point. <laughs> the AI is a yes man. Love your shoes, Zach, it's going to say. And I'm going to say I like them fine, hmm. but like who's asking? <laughs> I actually do like your shoes. They're different than usual. Yeah, I wore boots today. Okay, let's think. I of- haven't worn real shoes in three years. Mm-hmm. This is a big day for me, Miles. Yeah. No Would you Crocs rather you? have if your every one of your exes watch you pee? Yes. Every time you pee. Oh my god, yes. Or yes. They have to stop what they're doing and just yes. Like, <laughs> they have to in. they Facetime in or <laughs> yes. chunky peanut butter only. As wait, chunky peanut butter like meaning you, I can't. Sorry, have. do you not like chunky peanut butter? Every butter? time you have chunky, no, I love it. Oh, okay. <laughs> every time you have peanut butter, it has to be chunky. I mean, I already lived that life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I do kind of want all my exes exes. to have to watch me pee. Oh, you feel like it'd be a punishment for them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I like that. Would you rather retake the ACT Mm -hmm. or do a mudslide at Sanborn Western Camps? Shout out. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even understand. It seems like Rainy, like, (laughs) she said a very personal experience to her. (laughs) Both. She yeah. said, "Do a mudslide at Sanborn Western Camps." Yeah. Like she had, a, she did a mudslide. Yeah. I don't even know what a mudslide is. Like a- so, actually, at that camp that I went to, they did a Jello slide and <laughs> <laughs> like over and try and catch the M and M's. You wait, wait, wait you're, sorry, you're, say that again. You are wheezing <laughs> through this, Rainy, and I can't. You sound. Well, it's because I like have thought about this before, and I'm like, Face was first? that a real memory, or did I make that up? Because I remember them being a Jello slide, so a table <gasps> of Jello with M and M's in it, and as you go through, you open your mouth and try and catch the M and M's. And just to you, be clear, this is a okay. <laughs> it's a slip and slide. Yeah. Everyone's putting their body through it. Yeah, you're going in after someone else. Yes, and then you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking, wait, this is crazy. Like a snake, like you're sliding on your belly face first and you're going, ah, like trying to get the M&M's. That's what I remember. And I'm like, is this real? Like, should I call the person that I first, went to this camp with? And yes, check? I think you need to. First of all, 
So unsanitary. Yeah. Second yeah. of all, I feel like you would choke. If you well, it depends on what velocity you're going in. <laughs> I'm picturing her like a rocketing pack down. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think that she's shot out of a cannon, like slingshot. <laughs> Who thought that's a terrible idea? I know. You'd be so. And by the way, yeah, coming soon to the Try Guys channel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Um, but would you rather do that or take the ACT again? I think I would. I want to. Do I have this. to do well in the ACT? Like, do I have to study and <laughs> practice and prep? You Is don't that, have to, but your placement at this job does. <laughs> oh, man. Then I probably would want to do the Jello because I would take the ACT like and have it not matter. What if we made everyone at <laughs> work take the ACT so and bad. we would then re-rank everyone's jobs? Oh, my God. Yeah. Not that we have a hierarchy. That's not a risk I want to take. <laughs> I've gotten far <laughs> enough by really farting it out. <laughs> but I don't want my smartness to get in the way of my job performance. Yeah. And, right. I've, always, and I've always said that. Right, right. <laughs> you don't want to be like people realize how smart you are and now they're expecting so much. So I hate to give it to the AI, but I think that that was a good segment. That was a good <laughs> segment. Was a good segment. Yeah. And arguably most of our segments are gussied up versions of Would You Rather. No. <sighs> Nah. Okay, number three, rant session. Okay. Give each person a pod on the podcast a minute to rant about something that's been bothering them lately. That's actually pretty good. So that's pretty. That's also a good segment. But we're We've gonna, done it. We're gonna put it to the test. We call that boner to pick. That's right. Well, Zach, here's your boner. You got sixty seconds on the clock. A, I, <laughs> here's what fucking grinds my gears is that the YouTube ecosystem has been boiled down not to us praising who's making the cool stuff, who's making the best star. No, it's all about who's a little entrepreneur, who's making the most money, yeah. who can who can turn their their thing into an enterprise that makes the whatever. And all of these fucking people on the Twitter and people on the YouTube and people with their podcasts. I think it's so fucking lame. It's like everyone who totally professionally quote unquote like studies YouTube and every there are people who I like and respect who study this internet ecosystem yeah. for a living but everyone they praise they're not praising the artistry we know what you're talking about praising who can make the most money and I just think like I think if you are being interested in money is the least interesting thing you can do if you are interested in money as a person and I don't mean like to survive. That's 60, like, that's 60 seconds. Easy, <laughs> easy to say when you're rich. Here we go. <laughs> I have a headline about this. You ready? Yeah. And this was my bleak headline. Yeah. Um, I, so I saw a, a headline about this, and this is the, the headline I was talking about earlier. Yeah. This is a uh, a natural plug, Lurk. natural seg. Natty plug. Um, so it's about <laughs> Snapchat, people making money on Snapchat, which mm -hmm. I kind of knew about and then forgot about. <sighs> Dude. Wait, really quick though. So I was in this airport. It was that holiday nightmare thing where like I had to switch airports and stuff. But no, this is important and it's How not Snapchat. Is this related <laughs> at all? Baby, this is so out of pocket. No, it isn't. Really quick before Zach says the thing that we were gearing up to. I was at this airport fucking last <laughs> March. And no, because this is what had happened. So I was at Ontario Airport, the plane was delayed. And so I was talking to this girl and I was she was like, What do you do? I was like, Oh, I work for these YouTubers, they're the try guys, and she was like, Oh my god, I watch their stuff on Snapchat sometimes. Yeah, it's so weird. We put down Snapchats? And we, she doesn't know you guys from anywhere else except for Snapchat. That's a thing. I had a, an Uber oh driver once who, when I told him I worked at BuzzFeed, he's like, oh, the Snapchat channel. And I'm like, okay. Should I be back on Snapchat? Oh, yeah. Well, you're Big going time. to want to be after oh this. Oh, my God. I got to stay relevant. Yeah. So, <laughs> One of my favorite social media sites. Anyways. Really? Yeah. I love Snapchat. Oh, my God. Rennie's Gen Z. She knows. <laughs> I, I got this from our, our my friends Colin and Samir who I do like a lot they do talk about money but I like them um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is that David Dobrik your fave not anymore I heard you guys are friends no my god <laughs> I heard that not you guys for went years. to college he's together. one of the godfathers of your children not since he tried to kill Jeff Wittick with a fucking bulldozer or whatever Wow, so you're Team Jeff. I'm definitely Team Jeff. Okay, cool. Um, he posts. 30, <laughs> I don't know unless he's probably. I don't know. Too. I have no. Uh, he posts thirty Snapchats a day, and he's made up to a hundred thousand dollars a week on Snapchat. And I just, oh, when I saw God. that, I'm just, just like, like, fuck everything. Where, where, where was that published? Uh, he said it on his podcast. Hundred thousand dollars a week. He has made on Snapchat. I gotta be. I gotta be on Snapchat. See, and know. then that's like where we go. Like, well, I guess I gotta fucking. Here's the thing, though. I should do that, right? Because it sounds uh, yeah. like free money. Yeah. And then we're just spending our time running around racing. 
Like, at, at what point, David Dobrik? Yeah. When is it enough? That man has enough money. He could be doing whatever the fuck he wants, but he still is just like chasing this bullshit content strategy of putting out bullshit to mm-hmm. make as much money as possible. It's so I I'm just going to go ahead and guess that his Snapchats are deeply uninteresting. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have the financial backing to pull an Emma Chamberlain. Yeah, uh, do something really cool. Emma yeah. Chamby yeah. is doing... I mean, yeah, she has her fucking coffee company, but she's doing... Which she seems to like. She's doing whatever the fuck she wants. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and Emma Chamberlain has changed coffee movement. for young people, I think, in a pivotal way that, like, actually matters. You fucking stan. I do stan. Yeah, I, I really think that Emma Chamberlain has done for coffee more than any, like, snooty barista has ever done for the coffee How industry. So? I think that she has made coffee shops a place that, like, seem inaccessible to young people or seem like... Some, like, coffee seems like this thing that's, like... Oh, it's like espresso, fancy, whatever. She has made that feel accessible to a generation of young people in a way that it just did not feel when I was growing up. You're making coffee feel more feel accessible, accessible. make it feel about like, oh, like you and your friends are going to go to a coffee shop and like hang out and like do whatever. And you think she did that. I think that she has uh, made the feeling of going to a coffee shop and made the art of buying coffee. You think that young people were ever buying nice coffee? What I I tried and failed with tea. Exactly. (laughs) She's done what you can't. Yeah, she's done what I can't. But But if you watch her videos now, they're 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 just weird little art projects. And that's, and like, if you look at her, she used to make, I don't, did she do Daily Fox? I don't know what the fuck. She did a lot of yeah. videos, and now she's like, I'm going to post whatever the fuck you want, I want, and I'm actually just going to do like fashion, and they do weird so fashion well. shit. And they do so well, yeah. Because people like her are not... Well, so this is something I saw recently. Uh, there was this person talking about, like, there's two different ways to go. You can build stuff for the algorithm, or you yeah. can build stuff for the people. Building stuff for the algorithm, you're going to get a lot of views, and, but you're not going to have a devoted audience. You might have a lot of views, and people might know your face, but they're not going to know your name. Yeah. Building stuff for people... They're gonna your your the views are gonna take longer to get there, but they will. But it's gonna be a longer road up. People are gonna know your name and uh, maybe not know your face as much until your name gets popular. But like the point being, you can generate an identity making good content, or you can generate an identity chasing views. And there's just so many trade offs to make either. And what I'll say about the money thing, I watched a video that made me fucking really annoyed. Yeah. This giant creator. I don't even know. There's so many big creators now. I don't even really know who they were. But they were like. I made a fake YouTube channel. Ludwig Ludwig did the same thing. And I thought that was kind of cool, his video. This other guy made this thing because the way he went about it was very smart and like, here's how you market yourself, whatever. This other guy made this video and he was like, I'm gonna make a base YouTube channel and grow it from nothing. So he was like, makes this new YouTube channel and he starts making content on it like without his face to be like, can I build it? Is it really about skill set instead of luck? And the content he made was fucking like Mento Coke shit. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like the content you're making is for... People who like Mentos and Coke explosions, like that <laughs> requires zero skill. And it it is something that is inherently uninteresting, except for just like, oh, kids are going to be like, oh, it goes boom. <laughs> and it's like, what is the argument here? Like, yeah, I guess you can manipulate people in the following, but like the second you make something that's going to require slightly more attention span, those people are not interested. Yeah. So like... There is such an argument on on YouTube, yeah, where like the money wins. Like, oh, look how much money you made. Like all these people watch this fucking thing because it was like... It was like the Clockwork Orange, like it's like changing every five, five seconds in the subtitles and stuff. And I think that yeah, like what's valuable is actually creating an identity to have a lasting impact on people. The Emma Chamberlain thing is really interesting because she obviously is only able to do what she did because she has a baseline yes. of yeah. massive success. Yeah. yeah. And f- if other people were to start a channel and release her type of content, it would not do as well. For us, for our channel, yeah, we when we release content uh, that breaks our norm it does not do as well and so now we have to have you know art should not be dictated by trying to make as much money as possible Mm -hmm. but there is still a financial consideration to be had because for us to have all of the people working with us we need to be able to afford their salaries and to give everyone you know yeah we need to be able to pay everyone and so we can't be releasing underperforming videos. There's there's a mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. give and a take, a push and a pull here, um, where if it were up to me, we would release videos when we feel like it, and they were yeah. as much as we want. But you know, a lot of our videos require more financial investment. They they cost more to make. Therefore, we have to make more to support that. Here's and a question that, for you. Yeah. Do you actually do you think and do the numbers prove that cost into a video affects the mm-hmm. performance of the video on the channel? Uh, it does not. Yeah. Um, it 
Uh, no. I mean, Eat the Menu is sure. one of the cheapest things that we produce and yeah. makes some of the most. Yeah. Um, without a Recipe is quite expensive to make. Um, also makes a lot of money. I think that we could make Without a Recipe not feel like a television show, but the cost is more dictated by our creative desires. Yeah, right. Um, and we've done other shows. Like, phoning it in does not currently make as much as Without a Recipe. It's not as successful, but, but it costs, costs a lot. Yeah. just as much. <laughs> um, we tried this show that that we're piloting now, um, I the one I talked about earlier in the episode that I had to miss, and we had to, like, we had to build some stuff for it, and we filmed it in front of a live audience. We... Um, you know, people who were on our Patreon and maybe you saw it on Reddit, we surprised Keith with this this thing. I don't yeah. want to spoil it if you don't want to be spoiled yet. <laughs> and it was super fucking expensive. But like we had to justify that creative experience. We had to be like, okay, well, Keith's doing this branded video and then we're going to film these other things in the same space to kind of offset the cost. But that cost is more of a creative consideration, not a financial consideration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to have us put together now like a, a spreadsheet of money in, money out so that we know like, okay, this format yeah. costs this much and yields us this much. That way we can be responsible mm -hmm. um, because, again, left to my own devices, I would just make whatever the <laughs> fuck I want and not sure. worry about mm -hmm. it. Good segment? Yeah. That was really good, Zach. Good segment? No, I'm curious about it. I think it's fascinating. But I do, I totally agree with you that I think, um, yeah, the wrong things are valued or like there'll be a thing like how I grew my channel to this, like look at this, how much money I make on YouTube. But all their videos are about like how to make money on YouTube. So it's like, this is eating itself. Yeah, I mean, here's like an example, <laughs> like Eugene's uh, coming out video and I made a short film recently too. Like, so, so YouTube uh, monetizes the pre-roll commercials, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's how, like a lot of just how we keep the lights on here. Yeah. Um, that's how Rainy and me eat. <laughs> yeah, that's how you get your lunch. That's that's where your eggs come from. That's where my eggs come from. Um, but we that movie that movie that that short lost money. Yeah, sure. And we were like, yeah, that makes sense. But so that's an example of where money in does not equal yeah. money yeah. out. Um, well, I think that the AI really gave it to us there. Yeah, I gave making, it to us. It's there. It's making me sweat because Ooh. I'm thinking, wow, two for three. I learned something. I learned something about Zach. Yep. Yep. I learned something about myself. Yep. And now we've got one more AI segment before we um, end this whole fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so either you guys can tie and be equally as effective or you can lose your job to the AI right here and now. <sighs> um, that makes me want it to be bad. <laughs> here we go. Name, name that tune, but terribly. Hum or sing a well-known song terribly and have your co-host or guest try to guess what it is. Hmm. Do you need a clue? <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me one more time. Wait. This makes me want to do like wh what's the the is it chubby bunny where you put a bunch of marshmallows in your mouth yeah. and oh, yeah. then try and hum a tune? Oh, you know what we should do? Actually, this is a good video idea. Honey, if you love me, you really will smile and film it. Honey, if you love me, oh yeah, where you go? What? <laughs> what's you, a really fun game? What are you with talking the company? about? It's like chubby bunny, but you put marshmallows in your mouth and you go and you go, honey, if you love me, you really will smile, and you have to try not to laugh, but you go. Smile. No, no, no! You can do whatever to make the other person laugh, and yeah. then whoever's, and then if they don't laugh, they, oh, and then they have to say, "Honey, I love you too," but I just can't smile. I love you too, but yeah, yeah. And then if they don't smile, then you have to go to the next person. But if they do smile, then they're it. I okay. So go back to your hum. Is it marshmallow related as well? No, oh. but it's a camp <laughs> game as well. <laughs> I don't know. It reminds mm. me. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the clue is mm -hmm. that it was actually mm -hmm. you listened to. You can sit with us. Natty plug. It was mentioned on You Can Sit With Us as well. Fuck. That episode? It's a very mm. important song to you. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Wow. So I don't know. I don't think we should answer. I don't think we should answer it. Have the comments. <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> yeah. Comment below what you think it is. I'm really like I don't know. Yeah. Okay, Miles, you do one now. Um, okay, hang on. I gotta think about it. Yeah. Um what if we all hum the same song but it sounds different? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> you got it. Uh, okay. Um, um, Any day. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. If it's so easy, let's see you do it, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> is that a popular song? I changed, Would we know it? I changed the the, you the changed tempo it. as well. What? You can't change the tempo. I wanted tempo. to make it harder. No. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Wait. Brandy, you're just going to confuse me. Brandy <laughs> thinks she Never knows mind. it, but it's just singing along. <laughs> oh, I know it. <laughs> um, I've got one that I think is easy to round us out because I have no. Okay, Zach. <laughs> No, the tempos, you got to think of it. It's faster. Done. Do it faster then. <laughs> I want to make it hard. <laughs> you we aren't getting it. I want to make it hard. It's faster though. And it's a different <laughs> key and the notes are different. That's how fast it is. Yeah. It's yellow card, you Philistine. I'm sorry. Okay, here's mine. This is an easy one. Sort of Julian. Artist Julian. When no. he's hungry. Oh, that'd be funny. Okay, wait. Hit me, <laughs> hit me again. I'm going to close my eyes. <laughs> okay, wait. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Wop. Wap. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> that's wop. Yeah. Wow. I think that that's a miss for the segment. I think that's a hit. Miles. You think that's a hit? Pack your bags, bro. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Wait, man. can the AI work the soundboard yet? No. All right, you got your job. Then. Okay, cool. <laughs> Randy, don't tell him that it probably can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's been AI or... A die. A die. AI or PI. A- this has been AI or A die. <laughs> this has been AI or PO'd. That very good. Very good. This has been... AI or stinky eye. I'm glad that on mm-hmm. this show we don't try to make the most money possible. And we instead rely on the artistry. Yeah, no, we only accept advertisements from brands that we love. Obviously cutting it. <laughs> <laughs> we are obviously cutting it. Um yeah, well like that like um kitten made mobile. Yes. Yeah. Which you fucking cut that, making it seem like I was a sucker. I know. I thought end. it'd be a better TikTok if I cut it like that. Yeah, you, yeah, it was. How fast did you figure it out? Very immediately, fast. like almost immediately. But I cut around it. <laughs> I made him look like a chump in yeah. front of all his little pretty friends. Yeah, <laughs> all my TikTok friends. You know, yeah. Hank Green and Lizzo were probably watching that. And Hank him. Green follows the tripod account for real. I'll, I'll scream. Hmm. Oh, can you text him and just ask him explicitly? Because I feel like that might be a faster avenue. Yeah, that'd be cool. He could be like, look at this science TikTok. And it's like me and Rainy. <laughs> Why don't you start asking him questions to see if he'll stitch it? Oh, oh very good. Shameless. <laughs> this is our shameless outreach to Hank Green to stitch this. I thought about this doing this. Do you think that I should take my hit tweets and just redo them as TikToks yes. as if they I never tweeted them? Yeah. Yes, I've seen people do that. And I actually think it's really smart. Yeah. yeah. Like self front facing selfie video. And you're just like, here's the and you just say it more conversationally. Yeah. yeah. yeah I actually think that's. A and genius. I actually think that that's a iteration that's different than a tweet. I don't even think that's like recycling. Gary V would say. Make your tweets TikToks. <laughs> make your <laughs> audios books. Make your TikToks LinkedIn profiles. And make your LinkedIn profile a Pinterest. 
and make your Pinterest your mom's house. That's right. I uh, there is one that I've actually been meaning to request Hank Green answer. Okay, here we can make this a TikTok. Yeah. Okay, you ready? <laughs> <coughs> here we go. This is something I've been thinking about for two years. No. Okay. We we need an intro. TikTok's got to start. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is something I need Hank Green's help with. I've been thinking about this for two years. When dogs get into elevators, mm -hmm. how do they understand? Because my dog will get into an elevator on level zero. Yeah. The elevator. My dog will get into an elevator. Okay, we got to cut this fast. This TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Leave all this in the episode. <laughs> yeah, in the episode, it's fine. But in the TikTok, you got to make it fucking punchy. Yeah. What makes a good TikTok? Go for it. My dog gets into the elevator <laughs> in the basement. Right, Rainy, you laughed over. We can't. This TikTok needs oh, to be clean. Let's go, Rainy. <laughs> Guys, we're trying to get Hank Green's attention. Come on, Hank. My dog gets into... <laughs> Sorry. Let's take it again. <clears throat> okay. Woo! Okay, doing this for Hank. Doing this for Hank. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I think, like, good, like, podcasts... Yeah. Uh, TikToks like they have like a little conversation, yeah, and you'd be like, "That's crazy." That's crazy, yeah, for sure. Oh, let me, all right, go for it. Because my that's crazy. <laughs> go for it. Sorry. Because my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Because my dog will get into the elevator in the basement, and then we rise up, ding, ding, and we get out on the second floor, and he gets out, and he knows which way to turn That's for the house. Crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Is your dog the brilliant boy? It, my dog's the brilliant boy. Yeah. But, like, he rec I get that, like, dogs recognize a pattern, but how the fuck is my dog going to get into a magic box, and it goes somewhere else, and the door opens, and my dog doesn't go, the fuck? That's crazy. So you're asking if dogs know what an elevator does. I just don't understand how the dog isn't freaking out. Yeah. It gets into a magic box. Yeah. The box goes somewhere. The door opens and they're somewhere else. And the dog is just like, yeah, no, this is where my home is. Yeah. And it's a matter of seconds. It's, it's my dog. I was on vacation. I don't even have an elevator in my house. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> me either. Yeah. This is like, I don't live in an apartment with an elevator. I was on vacation with my dog and he understood the elevator after one trip. He's probably just, this is the room where a change happened. <laughs> this room where a change happened. He but go you in hear there. how crazy that is? Oh, okay, guys. This is the room where a change happened. I go in and it, different outside. Hank. Hank, help. I got a question for Hank Green. Yeah. I, we, yes. That's crazy. I got this <laughs> rash. <laughs> And I'm thinking, hmm? <laughs> stitch this, Hank. Stitch it. Hank, help us. I've got a question for Hank Green, actually. Um, why Sky? I've got a real question for Hank Green. Yeah. You can't see. You put on glasses. Bada boom, you see. Yeah. What's in the glasses? Yeah, Hank. You think you're so fucking smart? What's in the glasses? What's in the yeah. glasses, Hank? Answer us. You, yeah. You coward. All right. For real. What's in the glasses? You know, that's a very easy question to Don't. answer. Don't. Okay. Let Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I, okay. I mean, I'm desperate for advice. I opened a Google Doc. Oh. Excellent. I really was actually thinking, Miles, that while you were on paternity leave, you were going to come back with like a whole brand new revamped theme song. Next week. Oh, really? <laughs> it's advice that'll go four miles. Tune into your radio station. It's advice that'll go four miles. Everyone get ready, Miles Nation. <laughs> miles Nation, go. It's advice that'll go four miles. Advice that'll go four miles. What's up, Miles Nation? Uh, Ooh. Have you ever wanted to be clean? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever wanted mm. to be sticky? Oh, yeah. No. No, no. No. <laughs> no. Have you ever wanted to wear a black shirt? No. Yeah. Yeah. But you're trying to get your sticky little fix before you go out to roost? Yeah. Yes. yes. Kristen Wig. Jacob. Alordi. Hair. Jacob Alordi? Daniel Pube. 
These are things that <laughs> might get on your shirt. A wig or a hair or a beard. And the way that you can prevent it. Real quick. When it's about rolling. <laughs> rolling. Rolling on a lint roll. If I could stop you right there. I was in the Denver airport recently. Ah! And I just <laughs> wanted to know, face. when he said Daniel Pube, what actor did you picture in your head? Uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Same. And yeah. I'm just curious why that is. And okay, anyway, please continue. Mandala effect. Hank Green, is there a reason why when he said Daniel Pube, we both oh, you know picture what? Yeah. Daniel Radcliffe? Yeah. And is that us being mean to Daniel Radcliffe or are we just reverent to Daniel Radcliffe? Yeah. And also, audience, I'm wondering if you also pictured Daniel Radcliffe because I did. I actually do have a question for Hank Green. Do fish <laughs> have fun? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. What? Because I would feel more <coughs> bad about eating them if I thought they had fun. If I thought they like were having a gab. Yeah. What do you think um, is fun for a fish? Like <laughs> gossiping. Do you think that fish are ever Little like... Playgrounds. They're ever like, oh my God, did you see the shark? Do you think fish are ever like, ooh, look at me, I'm a swimmer. Do you think yeah. they race in elementary school? I would. There's a really funny TikTok account. Um, it's something about octopuses. No, stay on the fish, bitch. It is about fish, kind of. Okay. It's not really. <laughs> but it's this guy who's like... You realize that this is a potential TikTok, but unless <laughs> we stay on the fish, we have okay, no... Okay, so, yeah, it's like, do fish, like, do they have a bat mitzvah? Do fish have, like, a fun <laughs> little event where they go to the theater? Like, this is the stuff I want to yeah. know. Do you think f fish have quinceaneras? Do they put on plays? Do you think fish have, like, cheat days? I bet, like, if an octopus goes by, they're all like, oh, my God. Do you see him? <laughs> that guy just thinks he's better than us. What do they learn in the not. school if of it, fish? Yeah. Math? Algebra? Probably just how to like, like, yeah, I just am wondering about it. Do you think they ever go, oh my God, I am sushi? Yeah, when people no, say but... sushi, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, my advice is to get a lint roller. You know, I used to, before I had a vacuum, I <laughs> lint roll my rug. So that's another use. Waste. That's <laughs> such that's a waste. so tedious and wild. Tedious well, yeah, waste. but I didn't have a vacuum. And I, I feel like at a certain a point, vacuum. buying all of the lint rollers that it would take to clean up a carpet would cost more than a, a dust buster. That's how far removed Zach is. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I was gonna, oh yeah, buying the newest Dyson versus getting one lint roller. How, how Come much, on, Zach. Like, how much can a Dyson cost? Twelve dollars, right? <laughs> I mean, um, well, yeah, but I think a lint roller is a good object to have, especially when you have a black shirt, because this shirt I cannot fucking keep hair off of, including now. Yeah, and I just it gets fucking covered. And, and you've got a doga. I know, but the dog doesn't shed. Oh, you know what actually is grinding my gears, and this is advice. Hey, if West <laughs> Elm's listening, listen up. Listen up, West Elm. We got a rug, and it was fine. It was a good, fine rug. In fact, they sent us two accidentally, and we kept both of them. They kept it and didn't report it, and this is that's theft. Theft. They took it from their neighbor's porch. No, uh -huh, <laughs> yeah, we did. And here's the thing: the rug has been fucking shedding. That uh, rug like shed. Literally shedding like little like pieces of rug like uh, in our hallway. It's like, what the fuck? Still? It was yeah. years ago. It was two years ago. Uh, and by the way, people come in our house and they see it and they're like, oh my God, can you believe the fucking dog hair? It is not the dog hair. The dog doesn't shed. Sheep dogs don't shed. It is not dog hair. Yeah. Is, but it, the, is it your baby's hair? Is your baby shedding? Whoa. You nailed it right on the head. Shit. Is no. Julian a brunette? He is, right? Well, he's a baby. We're going to let yeah. him decide. So we're going to let him identify however you'd like. <laughs> but I think that he, uh, his hair's like a little blonde, but it's not really coming in yet. Ooh, okay. Baby hair changes color. It does. Time will tell. His hair, his eyes are kind of blue. You just call it camel toe? Oh, no. Time will tell. <laughs> Time will tell camel toe. Camel will tell. <laughs> um, but uh, no, his eyes are also kind of bluish. That'll change too. <laughs> no, they start bluish actually and then they turn brown. Isn't that interesting? Oh. Over like the two years, like my eyes when I was born, <gasps> rolls of blue and then they turn brown. I had blonde hair, dirty blonde. You should 
Dirty blonde. Would you ever consider dam, like dam. doing like a full like Ryan from the office bleach? <sighs> Miles, I That's would so love funny. to bleach my hair, it but my, it would go bye bye. It would go bye bye, yeah. bye bye. My thin ass Jewish hair cannot handle, barely handle shampoo. I started taking finasteride, by the way. Hey, welcome. Yeah, I was worried about it. Too late, but no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> my hair is thinning. So. Yeah, no, it's good. I think it's great to normalize it. And yeah. I don't know why I had to make a snarky joke. It's um yeah. Considering you did a lot for the balding community, I did. I'm an icon, You're an icon. of of uh denying your natural <laughs> aging. Yeah, it's a normal thing. But yeah, I, look. If you are out, so many people are out there, guys and girls. Like, if you were like, oh, yeah. I'm starting to thin a little bit, but then you just go like, eh, I'm not going to think about it. Yeah, just jump on it sooner than you want to. Like, don't be ju- nervous. Don't be service ner- your don't, hair. Don't be nervous. Service like Ingrid Michaelson. I'll buy you Rogaine when you start losing all your hair. Oh, is that an Ingrid Michaelson lyric? Yeah, I went to her I'll concert. Buy you Rogaine when, when you start losing all your hair. So those and on patches. Now you match. <laughs> no, she's just talking about lying Is that the song you were humming? And no, no. <laughs> love the I am, way. I literally was an Ingrid Michaelson stan. I love Ingrid Michaelson. Yeah, Where is she now? Get her on the pod. Oh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Would <laughs> but like, so in 2015, what was that like? This huge star when in 2009. Yeah. Um. Anyway, everybody, uh, we hope you're just out there and you're just enjoying the hell out of your life. I hope you're just jamming. And if you figured out what Rennie's song was, oh, yeah, right. put it in the comments. Big time. You're not going to tell us. Oh, you want me to tell? I don't know. Should she? Is it fr- is it exciting or is it frustrating? How would I sing it for for? And we'll cut this out. But yeah. you say hit us with the official tripod theme song, and then I sing it. Okay. If you don't want to know the answer, yeah. this is your chance. Ready? Goodbye, Rainy. Reveal that tune. Okay. Let's see. Now I'm thinking about the way I am by Ingrid Michael. Let's see. The way da, I am. Da, 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 da. Dun, 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 dun. Oh no! Oh, cake by the ocean. That was a hum your version of it again. <laughs> <laughs> what are you oh, talking no. about? <laughs> what what part of the song is that? The beginning. Oh, it's the fucking bass line. Yeah, you didn't do the melody. <laughs> you did the. Oh no! If you had been like, then we might have got. Why didn't you go the? Was that on the last episode? Did they talk about that? We got. Yeah, we got end. Do we? Have a good ass week, everybody. 